All right, hey guys, what's up? This is uh, Brian Billiards. And I just watched uh, John Schmidt's commentary on himself running 366 balls. And I watched through the whole thing and I took notes. So I want to go over those notes I took. I took about five or six pages worth of notes here in my little notebook. Um, so yeah, we'll go over his advice on straight pull, sort of his commentary on his run, and then my sort of additional commentary on that, or some insights, some things that I noticed about that. One thing, he believes you need a really level table to run over 100 balls, because he's a big believer in pocket speed. I would sort of counter that a little bit by saying, you know, you can play balls over pocket speed so that they don't roll off. That is an additional obstacle, but it's possible. So I just wanted to, to mention that. Um, he also said when he, once he gets to about 100 balls, that's when he starts paying attention. He's a really big believer in rhythm and speed. Like the speed of how quickly you're playing helps you do big runs in straight pull. And he says that every other high ball runner in straight pull agrees with him. That's part of why he believes straight pull is one of the best ways to learn pull because it teaches you the right speed and rhythm of the game. In other words, it teaches you how long you should be taking on shots, how much you should be looking at the rack and thinking, and how much you, you should just be moving past that, getting into stroking balls and staying in stroke. You know, not taking too much time, not hesitating. So. He says there's five five basics um, playing pocket speed. He says not to use inside English, but he advocates for using outside English on a lot of shots. And that's very different from what most people would think. Again, uh, one of the things I want to emphasize in this video is that a lot of the fundamentals of pool are wrong. In other words, what people think the fundamentals of pool are, like for example, that you should never use English, that's actually wrong. Here is the best ball runner alive today, a guy who just ran 464 balls, the only guy to run multiple 400 ball runs that are like witnessed or on video, you know, or like proven. He's saying he uses outside English like all the time. Or just straight top or straight bottom. He's not always using center ball. He's usually using top or bottom. And he's only against out uh, he's only against inside English because he fears the skid. He thinks it makes it more likely for a pool ball to skid and, and then you miss the ball even though you didn't miss it. It's just like a bad cling effect from, you know, the balls. So he also says one key is to not run into balls. However, he routinely runs into balls throughout the entire run. Later on, he advocates for bumping into balls to create extra break balls um, and extra key balls. So he does run into balls very often. So he does like creatively change the rack, change the layout, open it up for himself. That's actually a big strategy of how he plays. He also says play position on multiple balls and then you can relax and just execute. And I agree with this because if you do play position on multiple balls, you can play the game faster. You can play in rhythm more. You don't have to worry about getting such specific shape on just one ball in the rack. And later on he comments on how it's funny for him to watch a world champion pool player take like 20 minutes to run one rack of straight pool because he can literally run almost 100 balls in 20 minutes, not just like 14 balls. Because he's, he's relaxing and focusing on execution, focusing on making the balls, getting decent shape on like multiple balls, and just handling your problem balls, and then just, you know, leaving some good key balls and break balls for the end. You know, maybe creating some extra break balls or key balls so it's easier to get out to a good break shot at the end and then keep, keep your high run going. Um, and he also accidentally lands on D 
different balls throughout the rack, and then he'll just shoot that ball. Because he's like, oh, I happened to get on this ball, which was a little bit of a problem ball, a little bit tough, so I'll just shoot this now. So you don't have to plan out every ball in the rack to run 350, 450 balls. Everything doesn't have to be planned out. You just have to be playing smart pool according to the basic general principles and then just be executing well. That's all it takes, actually. Um, I noticed he looks at problem balls more than actually like thinking about how to run every single ball in the run. He just notices the problem balls and sort of lets his subconscious take over and just think, how can I get over there and get onto that ball? Okay, here's a good opportunity. I'll shoot this shot this way and use that to get over there. He's playing more on a subconscious level and he actually talks about that and mentions that. And he says, you'll be surprised how well your subconscious mind can play when you let that happen. Also, it's interesting to notice he uses an Everest tip, which most people think is not even a good tip. That's the tip I happen to have on my cube. And quite frankly, I don't even think it's that good of a tip, but I actually play really well with it. So I think that's an interesting thing to notice. <laughs> um, he leaves as many insurance balls as possible. And you sort of shoot the other problem balls out of the way. Leave yourself easy key balls and break balls for the end of the rack. You always want the end of the rack to be easy if possible. It doesn't always work out that way and then you, then you just gotta shoot through it, but you want it to be that way so you can keep your high run going with a really nice, good, easy break shot. He also says pause the rack, see what you would shoot from there, then hit play and see what he does and contrast what he does with what you would do. And he's like, that's like a free lesson right there. You're getting free lessons from that. Um, it's also very interesting to notice that he says he has a position or power stroke and then a make stroke or a cinch stroke. So he has one stroke where he's really stroking it to get position and one stroke where he uses a short bridge and tiny backstrokes just to make the ball, which I think is a straight pull skill. You know, that's something you develop from, from straight pool. And he's like, you watch these nine ballers, ten ballers. They just have long bridges for everything because they're used to powering the ball around the table. They don't know how to just cinch a ball, just short stroke, perfectly straight. Just make sure you make the ball, little stop shot, and you already have position. That's a really good straight pool skill to have to, you know, increase your high runs. He also uses a short bridge which a lot of people don't understand. They think all the pros use long bridges and you gotta have a long bridge. No, they only do that because they're playing nine ball and 10 ball all the time. In straight pool, that's often not a good bridge for the stroke you need. So the pull stroke should match up to what you are intending to do. So you need a shorter bridge for softer, simpler strokes where you're just trying to make the ball. And I, I play that way and I totally agree with that. Um, also, it's interesting to notice his chin is three or four inches off the cue throughout the whole run, throughout most of the run. Sometimes he gets like one or two inches above it, but a lot of times it's three or four inches, maybe even five inches off the cue. And everyone you talk to thinks that you have to have your chin like right over the cue, like stroking through your chin, just like this, just like a lot of snooker players do. And that's just not true. This is the best ball runner in the world the best ball pocketer in the world. And he's routinely three to, three to four inches off the cue. So quite frankly, I mean, you can be anywhere up to six inches off the cue and still play amazing pool. John Schmidt is proving that. If you look at a lot of the old school pros, like uh, Eddie Taylor, you know, the Knoxville Bear, dude, he was like a foot off the cue, very often. Maybe even a foot off, foot and a half off the cue. So Minnesota Fats was the same way. Although he wasn't like truly elite, he was more of a weaker, on the more on the low end of pro pool, okay? But still, it still proves the point. You can play a great pool that way with your chin high off the cue. Um, you definitely want to break out balls as early as you can in the rack. Uh, he also points out how 
pocketing balls is the fundamental skill in pool, not position play. So many people will tell you, oh, it's all about the cue ball. It's all about position play. No, it's not. It's all about pocketing the ball. You know, you get a high run by not missing. Okay, it doesn't matter where the cue ball ends up in the racket all, as long as you make all the balls. Because you ran out. You're on to your next rack. Like, the most important thing is to not miss. And he's like, so many people in straight pool focus on their pattern play way too much, focus on position way too much, then they dog a ball, and these guys run like 30 balls, or 40, 50 balls. These are not 200, 300, 400 ball runners. Because they're not focused on execution. You have to focus on execution and pocketing that next ball. That's how you make sure your run doesn't end. So pocketing balls is actually more important than playing great position in straight pool. All right. Um, he advocates using multiple rails for a position because it's often easier to come into the correct line for a position that way. Again, people think you're not supposed to use that many rails. You're supposed to just do stop shots and hold the cue ball. That's not true. And he's disproving another point that people think is fundamentally correct. He's actually disproving your belief system on fundamentals. Like, it's just not true. Um, so you want to clear the stragglers, which are the up table balls. Um, he actually plays a two-way break shot in this rack where he's making a ball into the side pocket. And he said, I don't really care if I clip the front side of the rack or if I barely miss it, bounce off the end rail and slam into the back, the bottom of the rack. Because either way, I'm going to get a good break shot. So you see, he's just, it doesn't have to be perfectly specific. He's just playing a good two-way shot. It's actually a good two-way break shot. Um, I want to say that he uh, plays to blast the balls open, blast the rack open, not to chip away four balls at a time or two or three balls from the rack at a time. And I totally agree with that. That's way better. He says Moscone did that. All the great high runners have done that. Um, I want to point out he jumped up on a lot of shots. He even says that. The more nervous he got, the more he jumped up. So you can still play great pool jumping up on shots. I agree, it's not the best way to go. He agrees with that too. You should stay down on the shot, but you can still run 300, 400 balls jumping up on shots routinely throughout the rack. So it's not that bad. I mean, you can be a world-class pool player doing that. So it's actually more of like a minor error. You know? Um, it says you want to go straight into... Either the side of the rack, the top of the rack, or the bottom of the rack. You don't want to glance. And then you want to make sure you just pop off the rack so you have space to run balls so you're not frozen on the rack. He says most runs end when you don't make up your mind, when you're undecided. So you got to pick something and stick with it, which can be harder in a straight pull because you have so many choices. So straight pull teaches you to be more decided more committed than any other game does. Um, he says many of the break shots can be played with follow or draw. And I think he's just pointing out this whole time that a lot of the fundamental things we believe about pool are actually wrong. Um, so his friend comes in at around 300 and he doesn't get sharp, he doesn't get mad. He still runs another 60 balls. He doesn't complain. Although I will say, his run does end shortly after that because 60 balls for him is like another like 10 minutes. That's not that much longer. And he'd already been running, he'd already been running balls for like an hour and a half. Um, and he points out, you know, playing great straight pool is not about 50 or 100 or 700 different things. It's like five or six main things. You just need to execute over and over and over again and over and over and over and over and over and over again throughout the rack, throughout every rack, on every shot. He says, here they are. Stay down, follow through, pocket speed, using a make stroke to just make the ball, using insurance balls, 
playing position on multiple balls and having rhythm. So you stay in your stroke. So he also used crooked strokes where he got nervous. We would shoot and kind of go like that. I mean, he does all this stuff, which we think of as only amateurs doing. No, you know, world-class players will do this sometimes, especially when they get nervous on like a high run like this. I'm not saying they all do that, but he does it and he is world-class. So um, his last shot, basically his second last shot, he stretches over the table, you know, for a combo and makes the combo, but gets the cue ball frozen in the stack. Then he has to go for a bank, and he misses the bank. And he says he, had, he hadn't shot a bank in like two hours. And he misses the bank. And uh, so, yeah, that's my analysis and my commentary on his commentary of his own 336-ball uh, run. Okay, thank you.